Hello, I'm here with Poppy King, founder of Lipstick Queen. Poppy, hello. Hello. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So I just wanted to start with, um, tell me a little bit about Lipstick Queen. Sure. So my brand Lipstick Queen started in 2006 and I started this brand to be all things lipstick. So this is the perfect brand. If you've been looking for a lipstick and you can't find one you love, then Lipstick Queen is your brand. <laughs> um, it's become quite the cult um, amongst certainly beauty insiders, but also with consumers. Yes, that's Did true. Did you ever expect those levels of success? Well, I guess I know that women who love lipstick really love their lipstick. It's a very emotional product. And so when you bring out a brand that's all about lipstick, I know it's going to be something that really develops a following. And I'm so thrilled that it has developed such a strong following because there are so many women who, like me, feel that with their lipstick on, their sense of possibility just opens up. And so it's a brand that opens up that sense of transformation and possibility. Exactly. And you've um, been into lipstick for quite a while. Yes. But you actually had your first company, was it called Poppy? Yes. When you were 18. That's true, a long is, time ago which is now. Such a, it's a you know, young age to start a, a whole business. So can you tell us about that? What prompted sure. you to do it? Well, basically, when I was 18, I was looking for um, very old-fashioned style lipsticks from, from like the 1940s, sort of old Hollywood glamour. And at that stage, it was the early 90s, and you couldn't find anything like that. Everything was very shimmery and very frosted and very pinky and corally. Mm. So I couldn't find any reds or browns or berries. And so when I finished high school, I'm not a makeup artist, but just a lipstick devotee, I decided to see if I could launch my own brand. And I found a factory to make lipstick, and then I found a business partner to finance the venture, and I went from there. So it was really just almost like a giant school project except this time it was for real yeah that's and did you come across a lot of challenges starting up a business by yourself I didn't come across so many challenges starting up the business the startup was actually much easier than you would expect it was more the challenges of growing the business that happened down the track so that was with my first brand I think it became so successful very quickly that I had trouble keeping up with the demand and knowing how to grow that business mm -hmm. so um, it the challenges came a little bit later but I think that can happen that you know there are two issues in business one is that you don't grow at all mm -hmm. and one is that you grow too fast and in my case, we grew too fast. And so it's the better of the two, but it's still a challenge. Exactly. And you've actually written a book on um, being an entrepreneur. Yes, I have. Is there um, sort of any tips that you would give? What's sort of the biggest lesson that, that you learned from starting that? Well, I think the biggest lesson about being an entrepreneur is to really make things simple, to keep it very simple. It's easy to complicate things, but it's very, very important when you're being entrepreneurial to keep it simple. And so sometimes our first instinct is, well, it can't really be this, this simple. I can't really think that this idea could work because it seems too simple. But when something's simple, that often means that you're on the right track. If something's too complicated, then it looks like then it, you may not be on the right track. So the more simple that you can think, keep things, and the more that you can keep things into small bite-sized pieces it's a little bit like being an entrepreneur is a little bit like if you look at a whole table filled with food and you think oh well how am I going to eat all that, that food but if you just take it one dish at a time then suddenly you realize <laughs> that you've actually managed to get through a full feast one dish at a time yeah um, if we can take it back to lipstick now. Um, when did you first get into lipstick? Was it something you had from childhood? It was when I was around seven years old and I was playing dress ups with my mother's lipstick. So, you know, I was doing what, you know, a typical seven year old little girl would do is snuck off with one of my mother's lipsticks. And, um, and I remember putting on uh, the lipstick and knowing that it was going to change how I looked on the outside because I'd seen my mother put on her lipstick and that it changed how she looked. And then suddenly when I put on the lipstick, what surprised me the most was that I felt so different on the inside. I felt like I had been transformed into a kind of superhero version of myself where I was capable of doing anything. And so that's really when my love affair with lipstick started as, as opposed to other cosmetics was I know that other cosmetics can, you know, correct or conceal or enhance, but lipstick really transforms you. It makes you feel like you're in a different space and capable 
of all sorts of opportunities and all sorts of possibilities. And I think that as a little girl, it just had this magical effect on me. And I thought, wow, with lipstick on, I can do anything. Mm. Can you remember what your very first lipstick colour was? I can remember that I was the lipstick that I was trying on that was my mother's was from a very famous London brand in the 1970s called Bieber and it was a Bieber lipstick that I was using that was my mother's and it was like a kind of oxblood red and so I remember that very clearly but when it came time to buying my first lipsticks um, when I was much uh, older you know than seven when I was actually buying my own when I was a teenager um, my first lipsticks were uh, bourgeois in colours in a brand called bourgeois which you can still get today but I was wearing sort of more of the pinks and that sort of those sort of colours at that point. Mm. You talk about your mum being very glamorous. Yes. Was she sort of who you learnt makeup from? Absolutely. My mother was, I guess, the woman that I was trying to emulate the most. I think a lot of little girls try to emulate their mothers and my mother was no exception. She was definitely, um, she had a very distinctive look, very glamorous and always wore her this dark red lipstick. And so she was the person who I most wanted to emulate. And I, um, I always kind of like looked at her makeup and tried to do my makeup the same way, which was with these dark red lips. Your look is very... Um vintage, a little bit Hollywood, do you base it on somebody? Not really, I guess, you know, I know that I have a sort of old fashioned kind of look so I, you know, I emulate more sort of that vintage style that tends to suit me better than modern. I try to mix it up a little bit with modern touches so that it's not too costumey. Yeah. But, you know, I've always kind of like known ever since I was sort of a teenager and I kind of realised that, oh, well, you know, it's kind of more like the old fashioned Hollywood that works for me versus new Hollywood. Um, you talk about looking to old Hollywood for your style inspiration, mm. but in terms of lipstick icons, is it again to that era that, that you look? Who is, who's your ultimate lipstick icon? I guess the ultimate, I would say, is Marilyn Monroe. And, you know, Marilyn Monroe, I think, for red lipstick, for sure, is the ultimate in lipstick icons. And really, she embodies just so much glamour and so much, su such a sense of spirit. And it's what's interesting is that by today's beauty standards, certainly by today's weight standards, you know, she would not be considered, mm. you know, the ideal, but she really is the ideal in glamour. And she's is certainly the ideal in lipstick. In lipsticks. Above everything, lipstick seems to have a real emotional connection when it comes to cosmetics. What is it about lipstick that you think resonates so much with us? I think the reason why lipstick is so has such an emotional attachment for women is we all have a story around it. You know, it's something that is very much a storytelling product, you know, and it's something that we all remember the first time we tried it or we remember the first time we saw our mothers putting it on or we remember the first lipstick that we bought. It's a very emotional product because it's one of the icons of being female. You know, there is, I guess, three icons of being female. There's handbags, shoes and lipstick. And so it's very much about a rite of passage. It's about that journey about what it means to be female. And it's much more than a cosmetic. It's really very much entranced or entrenched in the idea of what it means to be female. Mm. And throughout the years, I mean, lipstick's been around since the dawn of day, but it's, it's changed. Its social connotations have, have changed from sort of the, the Roman Empire when it was a status thing all the way through to the 30s and 40s when it being a morale boost throughout mm -hmm. wartime. How, can you tell us a little bit about the, the charting of, of how lipstick has changed such a lot? Well, lipstick is very indicative of where society is at, you know, and sort of what the expectations are around women and kind of where women's roles are at. And so lipstick has sort of, throughout the ages, has gone through many different phases of being something that has been considered like a status symbol to something that is, you know, at times, like in the medieval times, was considered something that only kind of women of ill repute wore, you know, and so there's been times when, you know, like through the 
through the dark ages when lipstick was considered something that you didn't wear and then times you know like in the 1930s and 40s as you said when it was used as a morale boost through the depression and through war era and then in the 1950s I think it went very sort of sugary and was very sort of like a lot along with kind of like the whole idea of the house and the sort of the domestic goddess kind of yeah. you know and then it went in the 1940s whereas in the 1940s it was the reds and very strong so it, it really depends and you know on what role women are playing and what expectations there are of women in society lipstick is a real barometer of what those expectations are and has gone through being in and out of fashion but even when it's out of fashion it's still such a subject of fascination it's always fascinating whether it's in fashion or not mm. and what role do you think it plays now for today's women I think today lipstick is something that women are it's a little bit like a sports car women are fascinated by it but not all women think they could drive it so mm -hmm. to speak you know it's so it's a it's something that I think again you know it's a, it's a fascinating product that really fascinates women but a lot of women feel worried about the idea of wearing too much makeup. So they worry about, you know, will lipstick make them look like they've got too much makeup on? But the key to wearing it in a modern way is to minimize the rest of your makeup so that your lips are the, really the statement instead of doing that full face of makeup. So you're not going back to kind of like too much of that 1980s or kind of, you know, into a, to sort of too many different colors competing, just keeping it very simple. Mm. We, you know, we've discussed that women, um, a lot of women find lipstick quite scary, especially bright colours. So are there any tips um, that you would give sure. to them? Basically, if you're going to go to a deeper colour than what you normally would wear or you're going to wear lipstick and you're coming back from wearing lip gloss, is once you've done your skin and you've done what you normally do if, if, you know, for your skincare routine and your foundation or whatever, then put lipstick on first before you do your eye makeup. And you, what you'll find is that instead of doing your eyes first, then putting your lipstick on and you might feel, oh, that's too much. Mm. If you put the lipstick on first, then do your eyes, suddenly you'll realise, okay, that's enough eye makeup and the whole look will look lo a lot more fresh and a lot more modern. Top tip. And is there any sort of, is there a cheat sheet for finding the right shade? Because it's so baffling when you walk into a beauty hall and you've got a thousand shades staring back at you and you don't really know where to start. Have well, you got a basically, the general guide, you know, is that the fairer your hair, your eyes and your skin tone are, the more sort of orangey shades, colours that sort of tend towards the sort of orangey kind of um, undertones look best on you. The deeper your skin, your hair, your eyes, colours that tend towards sort of like more of the pinky shades. So have pinkish sort of undertones look better on you. So you go sort of orangey with the fairer shade, with the fairer hair and fairer eye and fairer skin and pinky with the deeper skin, deeper hair and deeper eye colour. But it really comes down to your sense of style as well. It's not just about your undertones, it's about your sense of style. And what you'll find is if you try on a few different colours, the right colours will light up your hair, your skin and your eyes. It's almost as if an internal light switch has gone on and you look lit up and colours that aren't so great on you, they won't have that same effect. There's a kind of a magical effect that the right colour has on you. And you just need to really experiment and try a few on and then you'll get to see that. What lipstick shade are you wearing? It is fabulous. I am wearing Red Sinner, which is my classic red. So it's got equal amounts of blue and yellow in it, so it stays true red and it's probably my favourite go-to shade. It is lovely. Thank you. What should we be looking for in a lipstick? What qualities should there be? Is there a texture we should be looking well, for? If well, you're, if you're, it depends on what your priorities are. So um, if you're looking for long-lasting, then you want to tend towards more of a matte lipstick. Um, because that's going to be more long-lasting. If you're looking for more, more moisturising lipstick, then you want to go towards ones that are a little bit more shiny. They tend to have more moisture in them. So it's up to what your priorities are. If you want moisture, go towards the sort of shiny or the sheer end. If you want long-lasting, go towards the matte or the full pigment end. Okay. Do you think we need to spend a lot on, a lot on cosmetics? 
I think it depends on what, you know, on your, on your comfort level, you know. I've, I've found a lot of great products in drugstore, you know, and I also find some great products in some of the apothecary and kind of more, you know, expensive stores. But I think that when it comes to your makeup, it really comes down to what you feel good in. You don't have to spend a lot of money. I think it's up to you. It's, if it makes you feel good, it doesn't matter whether it's two pounds or mm. 200 pounds, it's up to your con comfort level. Yeah. If you were stranded on a desert island and you could just say one cosmetic item, one beauty product, what would it be? Oh gosh, that's a hard question because the sensible side of me would take sunscreen yeah. <laughs> being on a desert island, but the non-sensible side of me would take red lipstick. So it would be between sunscreen and red lipstick. <laughs> So what's next for Lipstick Queen? Well, we have new collections all the time and the latest collections, one is the Seven Deadly Sins, so that's seven lip glosses in a really silky feel, so no stickiness whatsoever. And there's a colour that represents every sin, so you can be sinful in seven different ways. And then the other collection that we have that's the latest one is called All That Jazz, which as the title would suggest, is a very jazzy lipstick. It's got shimmer in it. It's a slimline shimmer lipstick, which is in four beautiful shades. And that's great for uh, party season, mm -hmm. particularly. Um, so the Seven Deadly Sins, um, yes. part of the new collection. Now that's the lip gloss. Well, it's really a hybrid between a lipstick and a lip gloss. Okay. So it comes in a lip gloss form, but it has the same amount of pigment as a lipstick. So it's a hybrid. Because lip gloss, um, sort of it was it was big when I was quite young but then it's sort of dropped off the face of the earth it all got a bit gloopy but are they are they coming back I think w lip gloss new lip gloss is kind of like it's much more again more lipstick feeling it's not so much that sort of shimmery sort of sticky lip gloss it's much more sophisticated than that and so I think now it's about having a different wardrobe of textures mm. Um, and then talking about textures, your your other new release is um, it's got a bit of sparkle. In all it. that jazz, yes, all that jazz has some sparkle, but it's very finely milled. So the shimmer is very very finely milled. So it's extremely sophisticated. It's not the glittery lipsticks of yesterday. What is your beauty ethos? I think that when it comes to beauty, as I said before, I think it is a mind-body connection. I don't think beauty is really just what's on the outside. I think it comes from the inside and it shows on the outside and that really beauty these days, especially with such a multicultural you know, society that we live in where there's just so many different, where we have, there are so many different beauty, beauty ways to be beautiful mm. now. I don't think, I don't believe in homogenized beauty. I believe in beauty being very individual and that what makes you feel good about yourself is what makes you beautiful. So rather than trying necessarily to fit in, trying to find what it is that works for you. And once you know what works for you, that's what you go with. And, and if, you, if you are leaving the house and worrying too much about how you look, then you're not really being authentic to yourself. You've got to be authentic. So you have chosen for me um, Saint Nude. Saint Nude for today, yes. Great. And how do we start? Is it about a lip liner? How do we, how do we begin? Well, my feelings with lip liner is it's, it's a tool, it's not a rule. So it's up to you. If you like wearing lip liner and you feel more comfortable with lip liner, then go ahead. But the truth is, is a great lipstick should really be a one-step process, straight from the tube. So I design all my lipsticks to be worn straight from the tube because if you feel you're doing too many steps to wear your lipstick, then that's not the right formula for you. The right formula for you should be really easy. So I would suggest that all you need to do with this one is yep. go straight from the tube. So straight in. Yeah, straight in and just really putting on like one coat. And then you can, if you want to, you can then go over it with another coat to really make it last. And you've got the perfect lip. Great, easy. So do you, you put the first one on and then would you recommend blotting? If you want to make it really last, you can blot with a tissue and then put another coat. Great. But again, as I said, the, the less steps, the better the lipstick. And have you got any other tips for us? 
yes, don't ever lick your lips. It's an easy thing to think to do when you feel like your lips are dry, but actually saliva makes your lips drier. And so please, please, whatever you do, don't lick your lips. If you want to moisturize your lips, find a great moisturizing lipstick or use a lip balm, but never lick your lips. Okay. Um, and have you got any other troubleshooting tips for us? Sure. Um, a lot of women worry about lipstick getting on their teeth. Mm -hmm. So the best way to stop that from happening is to actually use your index finger, pull it through, and the lip color that's come off on your finger, that's what's on the inside of your lips that gets on your teeth. So that'll stop it from getting on your teeth. Great. Another thing too is when you're actually looking for a lip shade, instead of applying that lip shade to the back of your hand mm -hmm. to see the Which color. Which is what everybody does. Apply it to your index finger, to the center of your index finger, because that really shows you much more of a true representation of what it's going to look like on your lips because that colour at the bottom of your finger is closer to the, your lip colour than it is on the top of your hand. Poppy, thank you so much for speaking to me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure.